All right, my best BBL 11 of all time starts at the top of the order, actually, with Aaron Finch, the Renegades captain. He's been the captain of the Renegades for a long time. I think he's number three ranked T20 batsman in the world as we speak. He's got a phenomenal record in the big bash. He loves leading the Renegades. He's powerful against fast bowling. He's a very dominant player against spin bowling. And, you know, he's the current Australian captain, so I couldn't go past him to open the batting. His batting partner will be Sean Marsh. Spent most of his career at the Perth Scorchers, has recently moved down to the Renegades to partner Aaron Finch. Once again, a very good, strong striker of the ball. Plays fast bowling well, plays spin bowling well. Doesn't normally dominate the power play, but once he gets in, he gets set. Dominates the middle phase of the game and generally goes on and goes really big scores. I moved down to number three. That's a guy that played at most clubs in the BBL. I'm going to go with Bradley Hodge. Very experienced player. By the time the BBL come round, he's probably coming to the back end of his career, but just a class player in all forms of the game. Dominated the Big Bash for a number of years with a number of clubs. And as his career actually developed, probably started developing different shots in the T20 game, predominantly over the offside, over cover, over point, over back of point. So he goes into my best 11 at number three. Number four, probably going to be no surprise, someone else that's dominated the, the Big Bash for a long period of time, Melbourne Stars current captain Glenn Maxwell in at number four. Just a dominant player, scores 360 degrees around the wicket. I think he's developed his game against fast bowling over the last couple of years. He's certainly got different scoring areas and scoring ranges now against fast bowlers than he did beforehand. And we all know how dynamic he is when he faces spin bowling. His strike rate's up around 200 against spin. Factor in that he can also bowl with a new ball and a power play by his off spinners and he's probably the best fielder in the competition, one of the best fielders Australia's seen. Pretty easy choice at number four for Glenn Maxwell. Number five is an ex-Hurricanes teammate of mine, George Bailey. Going through the numbers, his death overs, strike rate is outstanding from over 16 to 20. He dominated there, he scored almost as many runs as anyone in that phase of the game through a long period of time. Also a, a tactically very good, very experienced player. Uh, he was someone you'd like having coming in with the game on the line. Someone that's at number six that's really developed their game in the last two or three seasons, albeit out of position here, is Marcus Stoinis. I think clearly being the best all-rounder in the Big Bash for the last couple of seasons. As I said, he will be batting out of position in this side, in the middle order, but he can also give you some very handy overs of medium pace at you know around that 140 kilometers an hour range. Just a powerful, strong striker of the ball. I think we've seen the last couple of years, and if the bowlers and not quite on their task, then he will take them to town and take them to town big time. So he comes in at number six. Matthew Wade is the keeper that I've gone for in the number seven slot. It was down to him and probably Alex Carey for that slot. I just thought that Matthew Wade at number seven might just finish the game a little bit better than Carey. We know that Carey's batted most of his career at the top of the order for the Adelaide Strikers and moved in the middle order last season but Matthew Wade's record's very good and actually he's probably improving the older he's getting his last couple of years with the Hurricanes and being outstanding so he's the keeper. Number eight I've gone for Sean Abbott, a wicket taking machine from the Sydney Sixers. He's regularly at the top of the leading wicket takers at the end of every season. It's probably always been a little bit underrated. He's someone that's never really been talked about that much but when you sit back at the end of every season and look at his cold hard numbers and figures then you know it's hard to go past someone like him. He's also a handy batsman that we haven't seen. Probably the best of him with the bat just yet, but there's a lot of talent there and he's an absolute gun in the field. Number nine, I've gone for the Afghanistani leg spinner Rashid Khan. I think it's pretty hard to argue against him and his numbers. Once again, a wicket taker, but his economy rate is also outstanding. He's been one of the reasons I think that the Adelaide Strikers have had their success over the last three or four seasons that he's been there. He continues to bamboozle right handers in particular. You know, his record's not quite as strong against the lefties, but the Adelaide boys know if there's a game on the line and they want to throw the ball to someone, they're not going to go far wrong with throwing the ball to Rush if can't. So he's the lead spinner on the side. Number 10 goes to Ben Lachlan. Maybe another little bit of a surprise choice for some, but his numbers through his career, absolutely outstanding. The leading wicket taker, I think, in Big Bash cricket history. And what he's done that on it is some variations that he's actually worked very hard on right, right through his career. When he gets the seam up, he gets the ball to tail a little bit late when he bowls his Yorker. But what he's most renowned for is his slow balls, those big dipping off cutting slow balls that he's bowled and taken numerous wickets with through his BBL career. Also very, very handy in the field. And number 11 is a guy that only played a few years in the Big Bash, and that's Sri Lankan Lassif Malinga. But when he did play, he was absolutely outstanding. You know, he's one of the all-time great T20 bowlers and still getting around now. And, and even last year, pretty much won the IPL for the Mumbai Indians, delivering a, a magnificent last over to win the game for them.
I'm pretty happy with the way that 11 has come up and I'm sure if you put that team on the field against any team, even an Australian team now, I think that team would be very, very competitive. So I'm really happy with that 11. I haven't named a captain yet, but there's a few in there. Finch or Bailey, I don't want to be too biased towards the Hurricanes, so I'll go with the current captain and Aaron Finch. There are a lot that were quite stiff to miss out. I mean, someone even like Jonathan Wells could even find himself in the middle order. He's been ultra consistent for a long time, you know, at the Hurricanes and then also at the Adelaide Strikers. So he could have easily found himself in the middle order there somewhere. Cameron Boyson's record as well is also particularly good, taking a lot of wickets. If you take Rashid Khan out, you could easily slip someone like Cameron Boyson as the lead spinner in that side. Guys like Xavier Doherty did a great job for the Hurricanes for years as well. His economy rate's outstanding. His economy rate in the death overs is, I think, the second best in Big Bash history. So that's unusual for a spinner to have a, an economy rate like that. Andrew Ty is another one, probably could have gone in there. You know, he's made a name for himself in the shorter forms of the game over the last few years with his knuckleballs and slow balls and his ability to bowl a Yorker at the end. So players like that, even someone like Chris Lynn, who has got a good record. But when I looked at Finch and Marsh compared to Lynn, I just thought that I'd be more comfortable with Finch and Marsh getting me off to a really good solid start on a consistent basis. You know, I think that's been one of the beauties of the Big Bash over the years is how many great individual players that we've seen and how many very good players Australia's been able to produce. Weren't tempted to pick yourself? No, by the time I got around to playing, I was almost in the wheelchair, so it was a uh, run and truly really must pass my time.